people that aren't familiar with corn grazing, it's a different way to to basically feed the cows without having to run any mechanical equipment through the winter. Um, we this corn that we're standing in front of here is uh, a 2200 heat unit corn. Um, one of the most important things with grazing corn is to ensure that it's not too mature at the time of uh, that it freezes and sets the maturity for the winter. This stuff is uh, in lots of places this year is probably some of the better corn that we've grown even though it does have some hail damage on it. It uh, still looks quite good in places it's 12 feet tall so we're pretty uh, happy with the, the growth this year. The biggest thing with corn is you never really know how which variety on which year is going to uh, perform the best unfortunately but uh, and especially it's one of those things when it comes out of the ground it, different varieties will be more impressive but the most important part is how many cow days per acre you get at the end of it and uh, you won't know that until the cows actually leave and you can see how much is left over on the ground so anyway th we've had really good luck i think probably the rule of thumb is to try and get in that uh, 200 cow days per acre um, with our corn last year it was a poor year for corn in terms of development with the cool summer and not a whole lot of sunlight but uh, we still managed about 213 cow days per acre is what uh, what we managed to to run the cows on and that includes um, first calvers and the cow herd itself so last year was the first year we ran those first calvers with the cows and it worked really well we had no issues with calving and uh, we'll do it again this winter we will turn cows in here probably about december 15th um, when the snow starts to come and covers up our swath grazing We'll go to, this will be the last piece of corn before the cows end up on our calving pasture here on, we try to, we'll probably be finished up by the, about April 15th, so if the figure on 120 days roughly and, and of corn grazing and last year it worked out to about $1.20 per day in cost for feed, uh, which is pretty reasonable uh, considering that pretty much covers the extent of the costs that we have because we really supplement with mineral that has calcium, higher rate of calcium, so there is some added costs there, but uh, no equipment to run and no manure to spread, so no yardage, and it's pretty economical. Um, crazy, you know, silage corn, we do silage corn here as well because we are sandy and oftentimes the cereal crops on a on a historical summer where we get a lot of heat in July will really reduce our tonnage whereas the corn seems to be able to come through that and recover when we get the next rain. But uh, this last couple of years the yield and the economics of cereal silage probably would have been favorable to, to cereal silage over compared to corn. But uh, this year with the sunshine we're having here in August and end of July I think we're going to have a pretty good pretty good uh, corn crop as well so I'm looking forward to that but uh, anyway I thought maybe some people would be interested to know how we go about uh, growing this stuff and and how we make out with them through the winter I guess one final thing to add is when we run these paddocks we've kind of here taken corners of fields that are 10 or 15 acres and it's eliminated the need for us to electric fence through the winter we do have one new paddock that we've increased numbers and increased acres so we are electric fencing it now but uh, for the last 10 years we've just done these small paddocks and it's worked fantastic the cows because they have so much area the rest of the quarter section to go on as well as the corn um, we can and have for many winters been able to get through without uh, supplement or providing water and if the snow is here there's lots of area they get to pick from the field corners with the grass and they seem quite content on those on that uh, kind of management but using those smaller paddocks gives us about 12 to 18 days of of grazing period and so you're not moving them all the time but it doesn't uh, they don't overdo it 
with the cubs when they move them to the next field and that is probably one of the key management pers- things to take away also is that we try to fill them up if we we only feed the day we move so the night before they'll be uh, filled up with enough feed that there's some there still for them in the morning and then we'll open the gates and let them into the next in the next paddock and that seems to um manage any issues with acidosis or any overconsumption of cobs if that's the case probably if you were targeting an ideal development it would be you know early milk kind of for the cobs as opposed to making a lot of corn in those cobs they seem to do just fine.